Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So it is currently basically the middle of exam week for me, and I am quite stressed. <laughs> but I still wanted to make a video for you guys, so I thought something that might be really helpful is just to go through what I do to get ready for an exam, and that might help you guys if you have an exam coming up. I know we also have finals and stuff that's going to be coming up soon, so hopefully this video can give you guys a few ideas of some new study techniques and stuff like that that you can incorporate into your studying to better prepare for your exam. Now of course I don't know everything, but I have taken many exams and I think I've gotten some pretty good techniques down that I pretty much do every time for every exam and it really helps me. So I'm just going to go through kind of informally of some of my tips. So my first and number one tip for studying is to start early. I know it can be really tempting to cram and procrastinate your studying, but really don't because you're gonna really regret it later. So then you might ask, well, how early do I start studying? Um, it really depends on the exam. And again, there's so many different kinds of exams. Uh, I'm gonna be mainly just talking about like multiple choice exams. Uh, Studying will be different for like a math exam or something like that, but I still think that some of the rules can apply. But for starting early, if I have an exam that I know is going to be tough and is going to require a lot of material, so especially like a final that I know is going to cover a lot of material and is probably going to be pretty hard, I will start about a week in advance. And then I'll try to study a little bit every single day until the exam day. Tons of research has shown that spaced studying is so much better than cramming. So be sure to space out your studying and do a little bit each day because that will also help you really solidify the material. And then if you have to relearn it later on, so for example, if you have an exam now, uh, but you know that this material that you're learning now is also going to be on your final, then you want to make sure that you actually learn it well now so you don't have to relearn it again for your final. If you just cram right before the test, yeah, you might remember it for the test, but it's gonna be forgotten right after that. Some other exams that may not take as long and may not have as much material, you can probably start studying like a few days before, uh, but never only start the day before, because then you're gonna be cramming and you're just not gonna remember the material as well. So as an example, I had a test today, and today is Wednesday, and it was my cognitive neuroscience test, and that's a topic that's really passionate to me. I wanna make sure I really know the material, I wanna do well in the class, and all of that. The material can also be kind of hard to really conceptualize and understand, so I started studying last Saturday. So that gave me a full four days to study, um, but I usually start studying earlier for these exams, honestly, but I just didn't have time to start until Saturday. But what I do for most of my exams is I type up my notes on my computer and I also add lots of diagrams. So if there's a diagram in the slide in class, I definitely want to add that diagram to my notes especially because I'm someone who learns a lot better visually. I also really like to color code my notes, and this is something that I think is really important. So basically, you can kind of tell on here, it's actually kind of hard because I did my highlighting on the computer and then printed it out in color. And I did that because I have so many diagrams in my notes that are in color, so I knew I was going to have to print it out in color anyway. But I actually usually highlight after printing out my notes, um, and usually the colors that I will do is orange means it's a person's name, so like a researcher if I'm looking at their study or something like that, or someone that I have to know something about, I highlight their name in orange. And then I usually highlight key terms in pink. I'll give you an example of what I'm saying um, right here. So these are my notes for an exam that I'm studying for for Friday. And as you can see, there's different colors of highlights. So people's names, like here, Tolving and Pearlstone, is highlighted in orange. The study that they did, uh, like important things about it, are highlighted in yellow. So yellow highlighting is just for important things, but they're not necessarily like vocab words or people. Then I have key terms highlighted in pink. So I have like encoding specificity, mood dependent memory, blah, blah, blah. So I just do that same kind of highlighting all through my notes and that just helps me when I'm going through to visualize and see the notes instead of just if you highlight everything 
one color, uh, I don't think it'll be as good for you to really pick out key information. So again, this is kind of what my notes look like, and these are the notes that I've taken in class, but then gone through and highlighted and made sure that I had the important things down. So after I do this with my notes, I will usually make note cards. Because I've already gone through and highlighted all of the important words, I know what the important words are, and then I go and make some note cards off of them. So these are my note cards for the test that I had today. Um, I mean, there's nothing really special to them. There's usually a term or a person's name, and then what it means on the back. You guys all know how note cards work. <laughs> but in addition to my regular stack of note cards here for terms, I also like to make a few of these like bigger note cards for really important concepts. So for example, right here, I just have this pathway that used to be a pretty confusing figure in my notes, but I simplified it by just writing it on my note card like this. And I also color coded some things that went together so like these, all these blue things up here are part of the same pathway, so I color coded them blue. And then same with the red slash pink things down here, that was the same pathway, so I color coded it red. Some other things I made note cards for is like here I have the anatomy of language, so this is supposed to be a brain, but I kind of simplified it and have different areas of the brain there. This is another thing that also used to be a very confusing figure in my notes in my book, but I just simplified it by just drawing arrows and which synapses were where. So literally this is like the cell body of a neuron and then the axon and its output. So like this is a neuron, this is a neuron, neuron, neuron. And instead of like drawing a whole complicated neuron and stuff, I literally just have a line and a little point that's a synapse, another line, another synapse. like. So I just simplify everything down like this. I also made a note card for things like how the hippocampus works and its connections. And here, this is supposed to be another picture of the brain and some more areas and all of that. So these are helpful to just like carry around with you and take around and be able to look at this whole process all in one place. For this exam, our professor gave us this study guide, but it's not really like, a study guide like you get in high school where you like fill things out. It kind of just has like main topics and some questions under it. So I went through this and basically filled it out on here. So all of the questions from the study guide are at the top in purple and then I wrote like my answer to it below in just normal pencil. Also in here, as you can maybe see, um, I have important vocab words in blue. So there you can see I have the main topic, the question, the vocab words, what they mean, and all of that. And again, this whole color coding thing just really helps me to visually see what's important and pick out the information. If I don't color code, it just looks like a mess of text and I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting from it. Next, we also have a textbook for this class. And reading the textbook is actually not really mandatory for us because our exams will mainly be based on lecture notes, but the textbook really helps you to get the information from a different perspective. But I go through and read my textbook and uh, sometimes flag important things, or I'll also kind of highlight a little bit sometimes too and I do pink is the most important thing, so like key terms, orange is a little bit less important, and yellow is a little bit less important than that. So if I'm really skimming my book, I can just go and read like everything that's in pink or something like that. And a lot of people don't highlight their textbooks, um, but I do if I plan to keep the book. So I did buy this book and I think I plan to keep it just because it is for the field that I actually plan to go into. So I go through and highlight the book because that helps me when I'm reading to make sure I'm actually paying attention. Most books also include some sample questions at the end of every chapter. I really suggest that you go and answer those questions and see if you can answer them um, because that will be testing your knowledge to see what you know and if you don't know it then you'll know that you have to study it some more. Because even if you think you know something, but then you go to try to test yourself on it, you realize you don't actually really know it. It has also been shown through research that being tested on the material before like the actual test, so just testing yourself or having little mini quizzes or something, actually really helps you remember it later on too. 
Now, I think the last thing that I did to prepare for this exam, uh, which was kind of just another way to see the topics and things that we covered from a different perspective. So I also have this book, which is the Human Brain Coloring Book. I know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> and again, we don't have to have this, but it helps me to visualize what we're talking about in class. And I know that I remember the information better when I've done the portion of that assignment in the coloring book. So like here I have the anatomy of the eye and the retina and I even remember on the test when it asked something about like the, the bipolar cell, I was like, oh yeah, that was the red one in my coloring book. I remember that there were this many and it was connected to this. So visualizing it like this again really helps. Another way to get the information from a different perspective is through online videos. So there's lots of places like Khan Academy or Crash Course that will give you information on the topic, but they present it to you in a way that your professor might not. So they might present it to you in a way that you actually understand if maybe you didn't understand it in lecture. I used to use Crash Course all the time. Um, I've kind of stopped using them because I've just gotten into upper division classes where things like Crash Course don't cover the topics that you're actually covering. They can still be helpful to get just the overall gist of what you're talking about. So that's pretty much what I do for exams. Um, I highlight my notes, I make sure I go through them like over and over and actually make sure that I'm paying attention and also making it meaningful to myself. If I take a concept that we've learned and somehow relate it to my own life, then that will definitely help you remember it. It's also really good to just come up with little mnemonics that can help you remember things. So for example, on the test I had today, I remembered that ischemic stroke is one that is blockage because I remembered the I in ischemic. Is that even how you say it? But ischemic stroke is involved from a blockage of the blood vessel and I remember that because I remember the I being like, block, I don't know, I is like the blockage. I have no idea. <laughs> but I remembered it, so just make up stupid stuff like that and it'll probably help you. And again, just find out what works for you. Uh, I know note cards don't work for a lot of people, but I know that they work for me. I did this by trying and taking some exams without making note cards, and then I took the next exam with making note cards, and I kind of tried that, and I found out that I actually did a lot better on the exams that I did make note cards for. So ever since I found that out, I've made note cards for every exam. Color coding is another big thing for me. Like I said, I like to have key words in a certain color and names in a certain color, and that just helps me pick out what's important. And it's better to look at your notes when it's color coded in some sort of way like that, because it's a lot easier to look at that instead of just a blank, like, block of text. But yeah, now I need to go study for my next exam that is on Friday. But luckily, that will be over by the time you guys are seeing this. But yeah, I hope that this video helps some of you guys who may have an exam coming up as well. My main point that I've been trying to make is to do several different things to try to learn the same material because if you just keep like rereading through your notes or doing the same thing over and over again, you're not really going to be encoding that information into your brain in different ways and then you're not really going to remember it as well. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Subscribe if you want to stick around. Good luck on exams, and I will see you next time. Bye!